Hello Makers! Welcome to 3D Maker Noob! I'm Joe, and today we're gonna do a fan dag test head to head. To head. To head. To head. To head. Yes, stick around! Welcome back Makers! So when I first uploaded my uh, Ainet Upgrades Part 1 video, some of you commented and um, told me that I kind of forgot to upgrade the fan duct to something a bit more efficient. To be completely honest, it's not that I forgot. It's just that I find the one that comes with it, well, effective enough for my taste. But it got me thinking, there are quite a lot of designs for fan ducts on Thingiverse, not just for the A8, but pretty much any printer available. Now, most of these fan ducts are quite similar in design with only minor iterations. And I decided, let me find five, which seemed either popular, looked efficient, at least to my eyes, or either come highly recommended by either commentators, viewers, or uh, people that I've got to know through this community. And I've decided to do a comparison test with each uh, one of them to find out which is the most efficient design. So we're going to start off by introducing our fan shrouds for the day. So from left to right, we have the stock fan duct that comes with the ANET A8, slightly broken as I was trying to slightly enlarge the uh, exit for the air. Next up is Spria or Spria by a designer named Lockster. It's a very minimalist fan duct which looks simple and effective, having two ducts pointing diagonally at each other across onto the nozzle. Then we have the popular circular style duct designed by Ruchenko. Very similar to the one I had installed on the Duplicator i3 Plus, the D cooler. Next up, we have a very similar design once again of the circular fan duct, but this one has a small section of the, uh, of the entire circle missing, which I'm guessing is to concentrate the airflow a bit further. This one is designed by Leo N. Following that is another popular design, which is a semicircle, also designed by Lockster. Finally, a fan duct that looks like it would pretty much look very comfortable with some LED lighting on it. Uh, it's named Fan Duct Spaceship Edition, designed by Paolo. Now with a name like that, how can you not print it, right? Now for these tests, I wanted to give the fan ducts and the ANET the best chance at success. First thing I did was download and update the firmware. I had version 1.1, but I wanted to install version 2.3.9, which was just released a few days ago. I will leave a link in the video description along with written instructions on how to install it, just so I don't make another upload on how to install the firmware. The process is pretty much exactly like updating the version 1.1, which I showcased in my previous video. The only difference being just the different firmware file name, but I leave step-by-step -step instructions in the uh, description. Having updated the firmware, I then wanted to print tests that matter. Now those tests come in the forms of overhangs, bridging, and finally stringing and fine detail. The idea was to have one G-code to replicate them all. It was simply a matter of slicing the models next to each other on the build plate and put them on one file. I just throw in the SD card on the printer. I would print them. Once they're done, remove them from the build plate, change the fan duct and press print again. That way every print is consistent in every single way. Then came the filament and settings. I use 3D Prints Green PLA as I feel fairly comfortable with that filament, having used quite a lot of it by now. 
All models that you see in front of me were all printed at 195 degrees on the hot end, 50 degrees on the heat bed, a layer height of 0.2 millimeters, three millimeters of retraction at 35 millimeters a second, and the printing speed of 50 millimeters a second with 50% speed reduction for the outer layer. I did not use white movement settings and I didn't also use Z-Hop for this test. I couldn't really make it too easy for the ANET now, could I? <laughs> One thing I need to point out though is that I had to remove the bed leveling sensor from the ANET for this experiment as it was getting in the way of some of the fan ducts. Now, seeing as the acrylic frame holding the bed level sensor is about four millimeters thick, if I'm not wrong, and it, it goes before the fan, so the fan sits on top of it. Removing the bed leveling sensor and the acrylic pane meant that the fan ducts would actually be closer to the nozzle, making them much more efficient. So eventually, if you do end up using any of these, you might want to consider changing the position of the bed leveling sensor. Now let's start by comparing the overhang test, shall we? I was actually truly surprised by all the fan ducts. While some performed better than others, they all did a fantastic job and defects or sagging only started occurring as the overhang hit about 70 or 80 degree mark which is truly impressive to be honest, considering that most of us tend to start using, at least, at least I do, um, supports at around 45 or 50 degrees, which tells me that this can handle much better overhangs. Now the finish was extremely good on all of them as well. However, in this case, the best performer was the semicircular fan duct, as it looks like to be one with the least amount of sagged overhands on the 80 degree slope, while the least effective being the notched circular duct, having very visible sagging of filament at the start of the 80 degree slope. Next up was the stringing and fine detail test. Now this was somehow not surprising to me with the stock and Spraya or Spraya outperforming all the others and that is due to the concentrated amount of airflow pointed straight and directly to the nozzle that is generated from the fan and it doesn't have any, any complicated travel movements for the air to go through, it's just direct straight out of the nozzle. It doesn't have to go through any circular ducts or whatever. In this case, Spraya took first place as it produced better detail overall and less stringing while the least um, performing fan shroud was once again the notch circular duct having a lot of inconsistencies around the corners of the tiny towers and generally having more stringing. Next up is bridging. Now, I'm going to be completely honest, this wasn't really easy to, uh, to decide which performed the best because all ducts performed actually quite well. To be honest, no major sagging in any of the prints and uh, the top layer finish was pretty much identical with all. However, the one that I, f that I found that bound the initial bridging layers all together very well was the spaceship fan duct, while the least performing fan duct was definitely the stock one, um, having much more sagging on the bottom bridge layers. Now finally I decided that I want a more torturous test to use and what could be more stressful to a 3D printer than a torture test created by Maker's Muse himself, Angus. And that's where the uh, 2x2x2 lattice cube torture test comes in. Now these were printed at 50% scale as I really wanted much more of finer detail to the print and kind of make it a bit more strenuous for the 3D printer. And basically just to give the fan the potential to, uh, to show what it's really made of. And this actually was a very interesting test to perform 
as some fan ducts that performed excellent in some previous tests fared much worse in this one, while another particular one stayed consistent throughout the test, and that is the semicircular fan duct. Now, while the spaceship fan um, duct probably has a very slight edge over the semicircular one in terms of fine detail, the semicircular duct nailed down both the details and the stringing equally, making it the best performer in the lattice cube tests. Now, for the rest, well, not that impressive to be honest. In this case, even though some fared better in other tests, on this particular torture test, they, they didn't cope really well. So overall, your best bet is probably going to be either the spaceship fan duct or the semicircular one. When you take all the rest of the ducts out of the equation, the results here for these two fan ducts are fairly similar to one another. So either of these two will not disappoint you. So what do you guys think? Was it a fair comparison test from my part? Is there any other way you would like me to test the fan ducts? Or maybe you want to see other types of comparison between the printers that I have. I have a few which could make for a comprehensive comparison. <laughs> Either way, just let me know in the comments uh, section below and I'll start taking notes for future episodes. As always, I will leave links in the video description to all the fan ducts that I have printed, also any other model. While I know there are replicas of the lattice cube torture test out there, the one I used was straight from Maker's Muse's um, Gumrod shop and that is the link I will leave. I do suggest you check it out or maybe his Patreon page and support Angus for all the work he does in the community. That is it from me guys. I want to thank all my patrons for their awesome support in helping me achieve my goals in this channel. And also for you guys who watch all my videos and watch me ramble on and sometimes pretend I know what I'm talking about. <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Please click on the like button if you enjoyed this video, subscribe and share. And as always, happy making guys.